This is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 and on the map Snowplow. On in the north as the Purple Soviets, this is DDF. And in the south as the Red Allies, this is Waff the Wolf. DDF versus Waff the Wolf. Two guys who can both show very impressive games, but from a little bit different eras of the competitive scene. Everything looking pretty standard for both of these fellas. Standard refineries, standard barracks, so no fast airfield, no shenanigans like that. Now, uh, as I said, Wop the Wolf, he's been around, but a little bit, you know, a couple of years ago. Not so much recently. He has definitely come back. Glad to see him. Glad to see him showing good games. But DDF, maybe he was playing years and years ago, but I don't remember him playing, or I don't remember him being a strong contender in tournaments. He wasn't really there uh, as much in the competitive scene, and certainly, if he was, not at the same level as Waff the Wolf. I remember Waff the Wolf in a number of finals and semifinals, top four kind of placements. Not so much for DDF. So I'm very excited considering the incredibly strong showing that we saw from DDF in the last For the Win tournament, which at this point is 71, although 72 is coming up in just a couple of uh, days here. But the incredibly strong showing from DDF, I'm very excited to see how this AVS happens. Snowplow, I do like this map, but of course it can be a little uh, difficult to sometimes play against allies on this map. They do have some pretty good MCV positions near the middle of the map that can allow them to do lots of base pushy things, especially since the third refinery or sometimes fourth refinery is right there on the water, very close to the center of the map. In this case, third refinery is up here on the high ground. Bears get a nice roar off. They're able to shut down a number of these peacekeepers, each one of those ones costing a bit for Waff the Wolf. So uh, DDF really wants to do this as cost effectively as possible and uh, lose as few bears as he possibly can because, uh, well, leaving one peacekeeper alive is a bit of a mistake there, but uh, he couldn't really do anything about it with the shield up. So, unfortunately for DDF, that guy survives. Oil Derek's grabbed by both of these guys, at least in a couple of seconds for DDF. Slight uh, misclick there. In fact, that he didn't send that guy into the Oil Derek. Okay, the Vindicator is not coming over here to the right side of the map, which is good because DDF losing that 500 credits in that way would be absolutely awful. Lots of flak troopers in the middle of the map and conscripts as well. A couple of bears mixed in for DDF. Goes Super Reactor after the third refinery. His MCV is still on the high ground. Going to be dropping those last couple of walls. And also Flak Cannon at the front. He's, of course, going to have to deal with lots of allied bombing runs throughout the course of this game. But uh, that Flak Cannon is going to help alleviate some of those problems. North, uh, whoops, not north, but rather south is where the seaport is. Naval Yard going down there. And Riptide's already making their way across the map. Are there any Javelin Troopers inside of these Riptides? We'll have to wait and see as DDF has pulled pretty much his entire infantry army back to be able to deal with this. Could allow Woff to kind, to kind of posture in the middle of the map, but for now, Woff is just kind of posting some guys around and not doing anything too committal. He's not wanting to commit too much to any engagements. Oh my gosh, he's going to lose that Riptide for not a whole lot of value. Wow, DDF has locked that building in. He does break break the laser lock a little bit there by packing up his MCV, and one refinery may be the cost for this attack. Well, two of these Javelin Troopers, yeah, they're either going to have to get out of the way or they're going to lose their lives because they did not get that laser lock fast enough on that MCV. Airfield is now out for DDF, and, uh, well, these Javelin Troopers are going to be annoying, but they're not going to be impossible for DDF to break. The follow-up for Waff the Wolf, well, he's got a war factor in the middle of the map. He's got his third refinery up and running in the middle of the map, so he is camping right there in the middle of the map. He's going to probably build some multi-gunner turrets. He is not going to try and move hit from that spot if he at all can, so it's up to DDF to uh, either make something happen around the edges of the map or to try and very... Uh, Try and break the middle, but this is going to be hard to break right through the middle against an allied player who's already set up like this. So we'll have to see what DDF's response is. Two MiGs going to be engaging with this Apollo. They get the kill very nicely there. And this Riptide desperately trying to keep these 
conscripts away from the building, they do get the kill on the Javelin Troopers, so they do manage to clean that up. Migs trying to deal with the Twin Blades, and unfortunately for DDF, the MiG does fall. The Twin Blades get, well, one of them gets eliminated. The second one manages to survive, joins up with his buddy MCV on the move to the water, going for that fourth refinery for DDF. I've been wanting to check in to see, you know, big picture, where are these guys going? But there has just been pretty much nonstop action for these two guys. Double Riptides coming out for, uh, well, actually... You know, it's going to be IFVs in the middle of the map and Riptides from the south. So three Apollos, one Vindicator. That's going to be the choice for Waff the Wolf. Of course, we assume Tier 2, we assume Cryocopters are going to be on the way sooner or later. Tesla Coil out on the water, so it's not going to be a flak cannon here to try and protect it against uh, air attacks. It's instead going to be the Tesla Coil to protect it against Riptides, against, well, I guess he could go Dolphins or something, but, you know, against all of the stuff that's going to hit him from the seas. It's kind of curious that, uh, yeah, okay, so DDF was trying to break the bridge. I was going to say, it's curious that he hasn't broken the bridge. This is four Javelin Troopers as the response. That engineer inside of a Twin Blade goes down. That is an expensive Twin Blade. couple of MiGs being just shot up. This attack is going incredibly well for Waff the Wolf. Now, he is going to potentially be getting a kill on this barracks. He's really just trying to deny the build radius, and that's what DDF is trying to maintain, his build radius, so he can reestablish this refinery because he expects it to go down. But in this case, the bears are here for the response. Flak troopers somewhere? Yes, they are here, but they're a little bit slow, so the bears are going to be trying to stop this Riptide from being able to escape, and the Tesla Coil is not up yet, which means this Riptide is getting free damage over there on the right side of the map, and the barracks do end up getting cancelled. This bridge is going to get shut down, and I don't think Waff the Wolf is going to be going for the repair on the bridge. I don't think he's going to find that worth it. Flak Cannon taking a little bit of damage there in the middle of the map, and the Terror Drone gets the infect on the Riptide. Three Apollos here just to keep guard of something. I don't know what their real deal is here. If they were, if they were thinking Twin Blades were going to show up for the defense or something, but they are there guarding just in case. And this Flak Cannon trying to get knocked down by Waff the Wolf, but he's actually just eating bears one after the other for breakfast. More and more of these Peacekeepers are maybe getting locked down, but they not not enough to actually break the bears free, especially with this civilian structure here. And all of the peacekeepers have been locked down by those bears. They can maybe finally get a couple of kills here now that the conscript can break this building and just trying to lock down these peacekeepers. Holy cow, what a mess of an engagement that turned into for both of these players. More peacekeepers show up for Waff the Wolf. He gets some of them locked down, some of them throw up shields, which makes, which makes them uh, invulnerable for a short time to the bears but of course not invulnerable to the other Soviet units. That refinery is back up and running. So, if we take a quick look around, four refineries and an oil derrick for, uh, for DDF, and the fourth refinery is missing for Waff the Wolf. So, he's okay in terms of... He's okay in every way because he's managed to hold off... I was going to say something about buying time, about, you know, he's, he doesn't have... He doesn't have the economic advantage, so he needs to find the advantage somewhere else. But he's already bought enough time to get up Tier 3, which of course means cryocopters can also be on the way. <clears throat> I even spies if he wants? I don't know. Like, what? Well, yeah, the barracks is over there, so it's actually far enough, or it's actually close enough, far enough away from the MCV that it still has Tier 3 because the build radius is insane. But, that being said... Athena cannons are really the thing that we're concerned about, as always. In Red Alert 3, things often do come down to artillery, and artillery being so, so important in these matches. In this case, Athena cannons, they are here to stay. Can Waff the Wolf actually... Okay, so none of these are spies. They're all just regular units. But can Waff the Wolf actually manage to pick apart the army of DDF because... Well, this Tesla coil isn't going to do much. I'm not sure what DDF was planning there, if that's just a delay tactic, if he's just trying to keep uh, Waff the Wolf busy, but it's going to be onto the high ground for this Riptide. Of course, it's Javelin Troopers inside of there. Yeah, the Conscripts can cover some of this area, but they can still hit the Super Reactor, so that's always a possibility. Tesla coil way out on the edges, and DDF not really doing anything with them. He's going to be potentially losing the Super Reactor. A great tactical move here, or perhaps strategic move, for uh, Waff the Wolf, whichever one it actually is. 
Satellites get called down. Cryo shot fires off, capturing a couple of flak troopers. Aegis Shield is not able to protect all of the Athena cannons, and this Tesla coil is keeping them busy, I guess, for long enough. This is a lot of hammer tanks on the front line. Can Walk the Wolf get his Mirage tanks to actually do the damage that they need? Athena Cannon's turning now to the front line. This is a bit of a spread, spread out attack for Walk the Wolf. He does not have the strength of his whole army attacking at this moment. So uh, as a result, DDF is going to be able to step on forward. Can he actually break through this allied front? This is a lot of allied forces, but this is a lot of cheaper uh, Soviet forces, which are maybe a little bit weaker. And the hammer tanks, the strength of the army gets beaten back here. The Mirage tanks able to clean, clean, claim one more kill there as these hammer tanks are desperately trying to just whittle down the Mirage tank numbers. Only two Mirage tanks remain, but also that Athena cannon gives so much DPS to the army of Waff the Wolf. And yeah, that super reactor goes down. It gets blown up. The Riptide also goes down. The Twin Blade also goes down. These guys trading hit for hit, trying to get another, well, no, a sentry gun. I was going to say another Tesla coil, but another sentry gun, which can be cleaned up pretty darn quickly by Vindicators, as you can see there. One bombing run and a one second of that Athena cannon to kill that sentry gun completely. Super Reactor is getting rebuilt. It's in almost the exact same position, so it's potentially still vulnerable from the high ground. So potentially one Riptide and one Javelin Trooper could repeat the exact same trick just a moment or two later. And uh, this is a double vent Athena Cannon, so once it goes fully heroic, things are going to get even more difficult for DDF. DDF doing an admirable job of trying to get as much advantage as he can. Ooh, narrowly saves that Twin Blade, but it's taken so much damage, and he never did get the Crusher Crane for those repairs. But uh, as I was saying, DDF doing an admirable job of getting as much value as he can, but I don't know that he can keep holding Waff the Wolf off, and as long as Waff the Wolf has the advantage of range, he's going to find it a hard job to keep him forever at bay. If Waff the Wolf botches this engagement, it could be over for either player. So if Waff the Wolf manages to... to handle this correctly, then DDF is pretty much dead. One Athena Cannon... Uh, completely wasted there for nothing. The, if the Apollos step forward, they all get wrecked very nicely there. Cryoblast fires off, captures a big group of those flak troopers. Bears on the front line do lock down a number of the peacekeepers, but it's not enough. Everything does go down there on the front line. The flak cannons, or the flak troopers rather, able to die to that freeze and to the peacekeepers. A little bit of cash back here for DDF. He's actually broken through the front line of Mirage tanks, and the Athena cannon is what is holding him back. But the Athena Cannon is dead. Nicely done there for, well, for DDF. But Waff the Wolf is rebuilt. He's still got some forces here. And again, I'm really surprised we haven't seen any multi-gunner turrets. It just dawned upon me that I don't think Waff has built a single multi-gunner turret this game. Which is very bizarre, especially for Snowplow, for allies in this kind of a situation. Why he doesn't have two or three multi-gunner turrets here in the middle of the map is, uh, is a little bit unusual. But DDF has been able to maintain those four refineries. Uh, looks like, you know, he lost the oil Eric a good while ago to that Riptide with Javelin Troopers. But the rest of the things he has been holding on to. This Apollo going for a bit of a scout. Womp the Wolf always did love his scouting Apollo sent around the map just to keep an eye on the opponent. And uh, that MCV taking massive damage, unable to harass once again. And DDF, ooh, giving away one hammer tank there. He was trying to go for a little bit of a strike, but he was unable to make anything happen. Javelin Troopers get the kill on one, two MiGs as they do get eliminated there. Another hammer tank goes down, and unfortunately for DDF, he is bleeding more and more units. Don't let that tree fool you. He was bleeding more and more units away to the range of the Allied forces. And now, unlike a couple of minutes ago, where the hammer tank line was much more impressive, the Athena, the Athena Cannon line is the one that is more impressive in this case. More Mirage tanks potentially on the way. If the distance can be closed by DDF, he can get on top of this army and break it quickly. He has a lot of DPS in his army. Actually, satellites may be the thing that allow him to break forward in another attack. The Athena Cannon does go down. Everything else manages to escape the blast. And now, well, there's still two Athena Cannons but none of them are close to heroic, so no easy opportunities for extra DPS. A couple of flak troopers going to be going down. Hammer tank's going to be going for the lock on some of these Athena cannons so they can try and get a little bit more DPS, but also get a little bit more health back. For now, Aegis Shield is blocking all of this from happening. 
A couple of fire, a couple of shots from these Athena cannons locking down these hammer tanks. And the Cryo Geddon is now in the middle of the... And this is, this is just forcing the attack. Lots of cash back for... Well, even the hammer tank goes down for DDF. But a lot of this army just gets frozen in place. Wampa Wolf doesn't want to rush forward. Well, he actually wants to rush forward with his dogs, not with his Mirage tanks. And he's able to lock down a lot of these conscripts. He didn't get as many of the flak troopers as he would have liked, but it may not even make the difference. IFB's now here to try and deal with the Twin Blades. As you can see, able to push them back very nicely there. And this one hammer tank will be dealt with. Wop the Wolf has broken the front line, and now it's going to be up to a Twin Blades, a couple of hammer tanks, and maybe a couple of flak troopers to try and shut down this entire army. But of course, Mirage tanks. Oh my gosh, that Mirage tank blast actually came from the wrong side. I thought there was one Mirage tank still remaining on the side of Wop the Wolf, but it was actually... It was actually stolen Mirage tech on this hammer tank. So those last couple of blasts were actually from this hammer tank now gone fully heroic. That shut that attack down. Holy cow, DDF able to split that army apart, break it open, and destroy it in just a couple of seconds, which, to be honest, a lot of that DPS actually came from this one hammer tank. That has bought DDF so much more time, but it also broke the back of the Athena. It's one more Athena now here on the front lines. And I have to say, public enemy number one is this hammer tank. Fully heroic status. The extended range you can see demonstrated right there. And I mean, even without the extended range, they're out of range of that multi-gunner turret. Oh my gosh, DDF, he knows how valuable this hammer tank is. He's going to do what he can to keep it out of range of that Athena cannon. And this other hammer tank, well, he can be sacrificed. Who cares about him as much? But now DDF, well, actually, he could send this hammer tank back trying to leech some of these buildings or something to try and get that one extremely low health hammer tank a little bit closer to full health. Once again, the scouting Apollo for Waff the Wolf. I have no idea how either one of these guys successfully ends this game other than just waiting for superpowers or uh, support powers rather to help break your opponent's position. Oh, that was nearly how you break the game right there is you just break that one hammer tank and then suddenly this army looks a lot weaker on the side of DDF. Well, we're back up to those three Athena cannons. Never mind, as I say that, we're back down to two Athena cannons. One twin blade does go down. I think a Soviet player is almost always going to be happy to trade an Athena cannon for one at twin blade. And this is how Waff the Wolf decides to break his opponent. He says, well, I've got all of the artillery and uh, you've got none of the artillery, but now I've got Athena cannons and aircraft carriers. EMP coming out for Waff the Wolf. Again, a great tactical move there to shut down all of those hammer tanks and lock them in place. If he can get the kill on this heroic hammer tank, that would certainly be nice. Terror Drone going to be going for the harass, and of course, Terror Drone can't really go for the infect. He's just going to try and go for the lockdown. He was trying to lock down that aircraft carrier to allow him to actually do some damage with the twin blades but it was not successful the war factory is still here but a battle lab is finally on the way for ddf he had his mcv at the front lines for so long that he was unable to get a battle lab out for the entirety of this game and now eventually this war factory will go down yeah flak troopers are nice they can do what damage they can to the drones but ultimately you're not going to stop athena cannons and an aircraft carrier from uh, getting a relatively easy kill on that war factory. The production has been broken of DDF, and uh, Wolf the Wolf may just be waiting. Well, he's got the EMP, and now he's got the Cryo shot. A perfect combination as Cryo Geddon rains down upon this army. This has to be it for DDF, who has fought admirably. But actually, okay, he almost froze his own Mirage tanks for a second there. Well, Twin Blades in the sky, and for some reason there are no IFBs with this army to support it. Now the production is going to be going down the War Factory, the Super, the not Super Reactor, but rather the Tier 3. The Battle Lab does get cancelled as the MCV packs itself up. There are two Mirage tanks on the front line, but there is literally no production here. I have no idea where the Apollos, where the IFBs are, why they aren't here to defend against these Twin Blades, but... One Apollo showing up now, and the Super Reactor is going to be going down in just a couple of moments. The Athena Cannon could kill it from a little bit further away, but Waff the Wolf is using it almost exclusively for the Aegis Shield as these Mirage Tanks are trying to hunt down the last bits of infantry which could kill them, and in one case did kill one of those Mirage Tanks. 
but uh, these last couple of conscripts, the last couple of flak troopers do go down there. Oh my gosh, he has managed to kill once again the ground army, but can you deal with the aircraft carrier? The answer for that is no, that MCV is not going to be able to do that. DDF has been defeated, Waff the Wolf clinches the victory there, very nicely done, and uh, again, a, a strategic use of a bunch of those powers. Nice combination of the EMP with the cryocopter or with the cryo blast to uh, to lock that all down. No cryocopters and hardly any multi-gunner turrets. Tools that are normally core to the Allied army in this case were almost not seen at all. Yes, we did see two or three multi-gunner turrets there near the end of the game, but that was pretty much it. So an impressive showing from both of these guys. A nice game and a nice 1v1 on Snowplow. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is Cyber signing out.